mean, ultimately you shouldn't wear them, but you know, let's do it in stages, right? The yoni, the yoni, the ovum, the female symbols that are used constantly. Here's a company that even uses the term, the ovum, because they're selling you something more than what you think you're getting. The sacred and the profane. This is another area where, again, spiritual, religious you know, motifs are being used in uh, different kinds of contexts, taken out of context and put into a materialistic context. The, the E, you see how the E is set aside there? Pretty self-evident. Um, yeah. Don't think we need to continue, you know analyzing some of them. That word is naive. It's the anagram of the word naive because they want to associate water with purity and innocence. You see the uh, Beautiful imagery of the sacred geometry, the vesica, the cauldron of all life, the lily of Mother Mary, the priestess, the lunar female, comes straight out of the tarot. All the symbols are there, if you know what you're looking at. Some of the poses are meant to be erotic, but they're also um, sort of necromantic. And they're always ready to promise you things you don't have. Here's the sacred symbols of the three and the cancer. You see the cancer, the Muscate, the dove, and the Volkswagen saying, we give you peace, associations, peace of mind. You don't have it. You don't have it. But if you get their car, you'll, you'll have it, right? Slavery to time. Associations of the water. Very, very occult motifs. We're looking at paintings in the same way that the Renaissance artists used it but for a very different context, different meaning. We talk about the sacred and profane. Just look at the mudras, right? That these designers come up with in order to spiritualize things. Because if you can spiritualize something, then your unconscious mind reads it as positive. You want it, and of course you want it. You want that light. You want that evolution. You want to go to God. Why not? So they know that. So they get in the way. Now, I don't need to be a Christian, but what is the definition of the adversary? What is the definition of Satanism, if not that? The impediment that gets between you and your God, you and your enlightenment, you and your spiritual development. Well, here it is. They're taking the very motifs that we have associated from our racial record that deal with our spiritual uplift, that our forefathers used to worship, that are encoded with thousands of years of our worship and our ardor and our spiritual associations, and now they're using it for selling bars of soap and perfume and everything else. That is why it's so serious and that's why this needs to be gone into and understood for what it is. Androgyny. Spirituality. Egyptian symbols. Headless women. We'll come to a close by looking at uh, some more of the usage of, of, of letters. The mo of all the 26 letters, advertisers know that the most important letter is S because of its association with sex and success and serpents and the sound. It's the most subliminal, subliminal and hypnotic of all the letters. And you put S into anything and your mind pays attention to it when it's on a product. And not just the letter S, but the wavy line, you know, the S, the serpentine shape is used an awful lot as a going motif. Want to know why? Remember the Isuzu, the two S's? You always wonder probably why they've played on that particular, why they only use those letters to mess with and not the other ones, you know, for instance, if you pay attention. Well, here is from a wonderful ancient book uh, by Valentina Straton. And he gives the whole game away. He says here that the word S-U-S, or sun, the sun behind the sun, was once anciently written S-U-S, just like that. So again, remember, this is not new. He's saying this is not new. It is a symbol of the serpent force, or super solar manifestation, meaning it's a solar symbol. 
The SUS denotes involution and evolution, the descent of the serpent force into matter and the return upward through evolution. The serpent solar disk is often seen on Egyptian monuments like that, SOS. Letters of the ancient alphabet were keys unlocking the originating causation and manifestation of all things. The SS or ZZ, same thing, symbolically used, which is what we're talking about, are interchangeable. Often the SS on sigils and talismans, and now we're talking about corporate logos, are suggestive of serpentine evil influence and denotes a sign of black magic upon others. 19th century authors before corporations even were existed, before advertising was ever done. Now you find the same motifs turning up in our data space, in our living space. The letter X is another one of the great letters of power because it's the X and Y chromosome. When they want to sell something to a male, they'll feminize it. When they want to sell something to a woman, they have to masculinize it. So X marks the spot is how you feminize something for males. So you have the phallic bottle, in the middle of the X, the chromosome of the female. The ovum and the X. The O is obvious because it's the female ovum and the X is the uh, X chromosome. And just to highlight it, there she is. So just like you have these uh, semantic associations, and we went into a lot of uh, liminal subliminal, you can take a word. This is another little tool that they use because they want to work on your unconscious mind. Just as you can expand something, you can also contract something. You can take a word, then you can shrink it down, as you know, into what's called a syllable. But when you have a syllable, it's kind of usual. You can often tell what the word is if you, if you see the syllable. They then take a syllable and shrink it down yet more into what is called the phoneme. It's a linguistic term, the phoneme. A phoneme, you cannot recognize anymore what it is. So it's a word shrunk down three, three times. And these are the phonemes that you then find on cars and different kinds of products all over the place. They mean things. XL, LX for light, it's Latin for lux. XI is for she, that's pronounced she in Greek and it means woman. XS is obviously XS. L is the ancient name of God. This is the male phallic. This is the word for knight. Right? This is the symbol of royalty. Status. When you get into the concept of the phonemes, you'll find that there's a lot of interesting things there. <coughs> you think I'm stretching it? They're happy to tell you what they're doing. Because here you have the car that's called the status, the Cadillac or whatever. It came to unco the status. And its phoneme is STS. Just like I'm saying, they use the phonemes to represent the concept that we're talking about. Two minutes? One. Okay. And then just to uh, finish off, we have to close now. PC, just that term PC. We talk about cetus representing the female opening, the phallic, I mean the ovum. And P is phallus. And that's where you get the word cities from. The cities were meant to be the symbols of the female in which we all live. Which is why they have the monuments and the obelisks inside of them which represent the, ma the male. So the word city actually comes from the word for the vagina or the opening of the female. So anyway, let me see. Yep. The male, this is the phoneme for the male member. I just want to end with my own personal reasons for um, being into this particular thesis. So that we're all on the same page as to why this is important. <coughs> NBC aired an investigation of Mattel and Disney just days before Christmas 1996. With the help of hidden cameras, the reporters showed that children in Indonesia and China were working in virtual slavery so that children in America can put frilly dresses on America's favorite dolls. In February 1999, a new report revealed that workers sewing Disney clothes in several Chinese factories were earning as little as 13.5 cents an hour and were being forced to put in hours of overtime. ABC's 2020 brought back footage of young women locked inside sweatshop factories sewing for Gap, for Tommy Hilfiger and Polo Ralph Lauren. Naomi Klein says that all 50,000 workers at the Yuyan factory in China would have to work for 19 years to earn what Nike spends on advertising in one year. Walmart's annual sales are worth 120 times more than Haiti's entire annual budget. Disney's CEO Michael Eisner earns 9,873 an hour.